Hello, Biotani. Welcome to the introduction video on cellular respiration. We are going to talk about some information prior to actually drawing and understanding the process of the cellular respiration. So to start us off, what is cellular respiration? Well, cellular respiration is necessary for the life of every cell. It does not matter if it's plant or animal every cell does cellular respiration. There's a common misconception that photosynthesis is for plants and cellular respiration is for humans. And that is not true. Both plants and animals do cellular respiration because they both need to acquire energy. And that is what cellular respiration is about. So what we need to do is describe the purpose of cellular respiration. And it's the release of energy from glucose molecules stored in plants and animals. So humans and plants or any sort of animal have to take glucose and make it into some sort of energy. This energy is ATP, which we know is the basic currency of the energy in our cells, ATP being adenosine triphosphate. We've talked about it multiple times now, but ultimately in the end for cellular respiration, we want to make a lot of ATP to fuel our body. Again, another common thing is people are say respiration, so it must be breathing, okay? Breathing is only part of the equation for cellular respiration. We're gonna talk about the respiratory unit and, uh, sorry, respiratory system, and we're gonna talk about it in a unit, okay? But essentially what it is, is breathing is only part of the equation for cellular respiration because when you breathe, it says breaking, but it should say breathing. When you breathe, you just really exchange gases, oxygen for carbon dioxide. And we know oxygen needs to come in to help with cellular respiration, but we also know carbon dioxide is a product, okay, of cellular respiration, we breathe it out. Now we're gonna learn how to use both of those in our diagram shortly. To kind of finish off today, we need to talk about two types of cellular respiration. The one that you guys are going to be most common with and understand is what we call aerobic cellular respiration. Now, you may not know it's called aerobic. You may not understand aerobic, but essentially what it does is it uses oxygen and it makes a lot of ATP. The purpose behind it is to produce energy for our body. It results, and you are going to need to know this, in 36 ATP and it's located in our mitochondria of our body. We're gonna get very specific in our drawing, but for now, just mitochondria is fine. The equation is the one that we know cellular respiration to be. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide, water, and energy. The other side to the story is anaerobic cellular respiration. Now, anaerobic means no oxygen present. Okay, so ana meaning lack thereof. So no oxygen used. This only makes us two ATP overall. So if you compare the two, aerobic cellular respiration makes us a lot of energy, where anaerobic cellular respiration makes us very little. The purpose though is to make energy by not using oxygen. There's a lot of bacteria and a lot of plants out there that are in uh, anoxic situations, meaning lacking oxygen. So if they lack oxygen, they need to be able to do cellular respiration in a different way. So that's why we have anaerobic. Again, it results in two ATP. Now we're gonna talk about stuff that is not bacteria. We're gonna talk about yeast and our muscle cells in regards to anaerobic cellular respiration because they're very common and we understand or will understand muscles and yeast is something we're going to use in a lab. Now, because we're going to talk about yeast and muscle cells, there's actually two equations. So the first equation is in yeast. When you take the glucose, when there's no oxygen present, you add a little energy and you end up getting alcohol and carbon dioxide. So yeast is used to ferment, for example, beer and wine. Okay, mostly beer. But why we use it is because one of the byproducts is alcohol and a little bit of carbon dioxide. Now this again only nets two ATP. So we only get two ATP out of this. In humans, we take the glucose and if there's a lack of oxygen, you make lactic acid. Now lactic acid is what makes your muscles sore. So if you have lactic acid buildup, it's after a workout or after you've strained, strained your muscles a lot, that builds up a lactic acid that needs to have oxygen present to break down. So once you've used up all the oxygen and you go into anaerobic cellular respiration, you're gonna produce lactic acid. Again, two usable ATP is available. 
So again, this is just the start of what is respiration, cellular respiration. There is both aerobic and anaerobic. In the next video you will watch, you are going to learn in depth aerobic cellular respiration.